Welcome back to Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex, and in today's video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of how a professional and high end auto body repair shop repairs and paints a vehicle after an accident. And we're not just at any body shop today, we're at Mancuso Auto Art in Glenview, Illinois. And these guys work on a lot of cool cars. They work on cars like Lamborghinis and like Ferraris, and they do custom work as well, like a custom Liberty Walk kit on this 458 behind me. So it's pretty safe to say, that in today's video, we're going to learn how this work is performed properly. Now my goal for this video is to break down each and every step in a very clear and easy to understand fashion, not only to satisfy your curiosity and my own, but to better arm you with knowledge in case you find yourself in a situation where understanding the lingo, understanding the exact process, and knowing the right questions to ask could help you negotiate a better deal or know if your car was repaired right after an accident. My other goal is to get my beloved 2003 E55 AMG back on the road after a GMC Sierra smashed into my fender. Now this happened 500 miles after a 36 hour paint correction and ceramic coating. So we're gonna find out how they paint a car with a ceramic coating applied to it as well. The first step in the process depends on the damage on your vehicle. So in this case, the primary damage is on the front left fender and then the fender actually hit the front of the left door. So this is pretty cut and dry. We're gonna be replacing the fender and the V8 compressor badge. Uh, and then we're gonna find out what kind of paint work is needed on the door and blend work as well. Uh, but if your car was involved, in an accident where there was, for example, quarter panel damage or frame damage, uh, they may need to disassemble the car in order to give you a complete estimate up front. Uh, the second step is furnishing parts. Now, in this case, I was paid out by the GMC Sierra guys insurance, and I did this for a couple of reasons. The main one being that I wanted to be in full control of the parts used on my car, and the second one being with cash, I can negotiate a better deal. Uh, so what we have here is a used OEM fender. It's obviously not the right color, but I'd rather go this route than a cheaper aftermarket fender on this car. Uh, we got the V8 compressor badge right from the Mercedes dealer. And then kind of an add-on is that I will be replacing the side mirrors with the 07 to 09 facelifted mirrors, and I think that's gonna look really good. First in the repair process was disassembly, and yes, I'll be hanging my smash fender on my garage wall. Ted was the guy given my ticket this morning, and he wasted no time getting to work, jacking up the car, removing the wheel, and taking out the inner fender liner. Next, he pulled the front bumper away since it's connected to the bad fender. He removed the left side skirt and then proceeded to disassemble the door for removal. This included removing the door panel, the side mirror, and the exterior door handle. With that, the door was unbolted and lifted off the car, which gave him access to the remaining fender bolts, and off came our damaged fender. And here she is, my totally naked E55 AMG, and I'm not going to lie, it's really weird seeing the car like this. Oh, and I apologize for all the noise, guys, but these guys are going to town fixing up a bunch of other cars. I'm kind of filming in the middle of their normal work day. Uh, but Ted had to take off that front left door in order to remove our damaged fender and in order to properly repair this door. As I'd mentioned, uh, there was a little bit of damage in the door and I'll show you that up close. It's really minor. Basically, we just have some paint that came off here and right here, but they're gonna do it right, remove the door and paint the door, the new fender and the mirrors all at once, all right next to each other. That way they blend and match perfectly and they have assessed the paint on the E55 to determine that they don't need to blend into adjacent panels like the hood and like the front bumper. In some situations, you do need to blend paint, especially if, for example, you smash your rear quarter panel, they're gonna blend into the roof. What we're doing next, or what they're doing next, is removing uh, any trim parts, any plastic on this door, and then they're gonna start stripping the paint on the door and the mirrors and getting everything prepped for the paint booth. All right, Mike is almost done prepping the fender, and as you can tell, he has gone down to bare metal in some areas. These are areas that had imperfections like rock chips, so this way we don't have to use any filler on the fender. And I'll have him explain this, but he's not gonna use traditional primer either. Next up, we have Mike the painter sanding down the door in preparation.
preparation for paint. Mike has 35 years of experience painting cars, so needless to say, I'm really excited to see his work and learn a few things. Mike's using a fine grit sandpaper on the door and is not removing all of the clear coat. The goal here is to rough up the surface for better paint adhesion, and the only area that will be sanded down to bare metal is where the fender damaged the paint. Now this door was just ceramic coated, but that doesn't add any labor to the prep process and no additional chemicals are needed to remove it. So don't let anybody tell you you got to pay more money to have a car that's been ceramic coated painted, whether it's painting the entire panel or just blending into it. They're going to do the exact same process regardless. So right now, Mike is wiping down the door. Everything is almost ready to get painted. So he's wiping it with a wax and grease remover. Uh, and then we are going to get to painting, or at least Mike is. <laughs> uh, he's going to paint in about an 80 degree room. But in order to get this to cure properly, they're actually going to pump it up to 170 degrees in this room, which is just crazy. Uh, and that'll go for about 40 minutes. And then these parts are ready to be handled and put back on the E55. All right, what we've got here is your code is 197 on your Mercedes. Um, so I'm going to punch in on our PPG computer to search for that code. I'm going to put the code in, 197. This will give me the different manufacturers that go with that code. There's Piago, Toyota, Volvo, some Willys, but here's our Mercedes code up here. So we continue on to that. These are the variances that the manufacturer has actually documented and made. So from depending on where the car is built, what plant, what uh, manufacturing establishment, those variances may differ from factory to factory. Okay. So that's where you come up with your variances. Um, if we go down to here where there's an all specials, this is a, a special feature that's in our system that can help us. These are all the different variances for this 197 that have been documented from other painters out there, um, stuff like that, and they oh, wow. all sent them in to PPG. So you guys share the knowledge. So we share the that's knowledge great. as much as we can. Yeah. Um, a lot of people may, you know, it, it depends on port of entries, where these vehicles come into the United States and stuff like that, and, and how they were shipped and what they've already seen. Right. You're going to have a variance from color from one okay. to the next. So this is just a list, and I mean, it, it's a pretty hefty list on this one as we scroll down. Yeah. Um, so it's not just basically, here's the code, this is it, here we go. Um, so it takes a lot of knowledge and skill to figure out which one that you're going to use to get the best color match. Okay. Um, I know this color pretty well, being that you know we're a Mercedes shop. Um, I go back to my standards and I'm actually going to go with the Prime that went with this one. Looking at the variant decks and knowing this color personally, I know that I'm going to get a pretty darn good match. Awesome. Very cool. So we go ahead and we can mix it up. We can press continue. Um, this is going to describe, basically it gives the painter uh, a ballpark figure of how much material to mix up Okay. Um, per panel. So if we go to yours, I'm going to classify yours as a medium car. We're going to paint the fender. And we're going to blend into the door. The checkered board is more for a blend. So we won't be painting that door completely. We're just going to blend the color in to make it match. So we'll start by mixing this up here, it's asking for five and a half ounces. Um, I usually go a little bit more than that. I'm gonna do eight on this one. And we'll just start mixing. So does that mean I get some touch up paint on my <laughs> way out of here? <laughs> yes. Um, this is our etch primer. This is what we're gonna use in place of primer surfacer, meaning that this panel didn't need body work or anything like that to it. We've just got some broken through areas to the metal. This is mainly a anti-corrosion coating to help uh, keep the elements and the environment away from the panel. We're not looking to cover it completely. Our next step is going to be our sealer coat. Um, on this job particular here, since we have no bodywork and we finished it off in a nice 
600 grit, we can go straight to sealer. Sealer is different than primer. Um, primer would be something that you would use more so if you had bodywork on this fender. This one here, we just want to seal it off so it's got a good flat surface for our paint to lay down on. Actually looks really cool. <laughs> it is kind of cool. Look at that. It's a nice color. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should I paint the E55 blue or what? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's changing already. Yeah, it's totally disappearing. It's crazy. There's my black car again. That's the water evaporating out of the material that we just sprayed on. Mike, you said that's a clear base coat and it's only for the door, right? Yes. This okay. is what. I'm using this primarily so that when I go to put my color coat on, I have a nice even surface to blend my color out into to make my match. Okay, so you're not okay. gonna use that on any other panel, no, it's just it's for just the this panel. Gotcha. Here. Okay. All right guys, check this out. This color right here is what the machine would spit out if you just simply put in the paint code 197 for this Mercedes. Look at how different that is than the actual panel on the car. So this is the custom color that Mike made by matching his swatch up to the hood and getting the exact color from this car because again, it has 100,000 miles on it. There are variances, especially with a metallic paint. So this is the importance of a very, very experienced painter. All right, so everything is out of the paint booth slash oven, 170 degrees, 45 minutes, and that's all it took, and these parts can now be handled. And this does not do justice to how nice of a paint job this is. Mike did a fantastic job. Look at the obsidian on here. It looks so, so nice. I'm really excited to get everything back on the car. Uh, so of course, we have all of the individual mirror parts ready to be reassembled, and we have what looks to be a brand new door uh, without any damage from the fender running into it. Uh, so as good as everything looks right now, it's actually gonna get even better because the next step is a wet sand and buff before all of the parts go back on the E55. So right now Juan is dry sanding the door and it's hard to catch on camera. Uh, and also because Mike did a really good job with this paint, but there's always gonna be pieces of dirt, little imperfections in the paint. So it's Juan's job to 
dry sand, then wet sand, and then buff and polish this to perfection so there are no impurities in the clear coat. Uh, and Juan's been doing this for 21 years. Uh, so he's got a ton of experience and I've seen some of his other work here and it's amazing. Uh, also, if you guys are interested in suits, Juan is a suit Instagram model. So check him out. I'll leave all of his info down below. He did this car right here about a month ago and it looks absolutely perfect. It's amazing. Uh, but something else that he mentioned to me that I found interesting was if you get into an accident and only a small portion of your car was damaged, let's say just a door or a quarter panel, after they repair it, and he buffs and polishes it out to perfection like this one here, it may not match the rest of the car, especially a darker colored car uh, that has some scratches and swirl marks. Now, something I find kind of odd is that the insurance company will not pay to have the rest of the car buffed, so it won't really match the new panel. So something to consider if you get into an accident with a car that you like and you're going through your insurance company. All right, guys, here's a little sneak peek at what this is gonna look like. Juan polished out just this little section for me. He still has a bunch of work to do, but this is looking amazing. It's basically like a mirror. All right, guys, it is final reveal time, and we just set up for the thumbnail. So you guys have already seen this view already, and it is fantastic. This is super cool. Uh, so after Ted put the car back together, it went to the wash rack. They washed up the car, and they also do uh, a complete function test of everything. Make sure the new mirrors work, uh, brake lights work, headlights work. That way there are no surprises just in case something got disconnected. Who knows? But they do a very thorough check of the entire car before it goes back to me and uh, I don't even know what to say. This is unbelievable. Mike did such a good job on this paint. I inspected this up close and it's just absolutely perfect. I mean, I just, I can't find any runs. There's no drips, there's no nothing. And Juan buffed it out perfectly. And it looks basically like I got it back uh, from the 36 hour paint correction and ceramic coating. It looks brand new again. And it's been like about two and a half months since the accident. So I've been looking at this car in my garage all winter with a smashed fender, all dirty, and now she is back ready for spring. So I don't know if you guys are gonna catch how nice this paint is on camera. It is just perfect, like a mirror. And it matches the rest of the car absolutely perfectly. You'd never know this thing was hit or anything was blended into this door. I mean, remember, he had to paint right up to here and then kind of blend it in and you can't tell at all, even up close. Uh, and then we got our new mirrors. They look really nice. These are the 07 to 09 facelifted mirrors and I love the look. Now it's kind of more complete in the front end with the E63 front bumper, with the blacked out headlights and the E63 grill. It looks absolutely perfect. It's hard to believe that this car is a 2003 with 107,000 miles on it. Well, that'll do it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this style video. I hope you learned something. And if you live anywhere near Chicago and you need some body work, definitely give these guys a call. I'll leave all of their information linked down below. Hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, don't let a pickup truck back into your freshly paint corrected and ceramic coated E55. It really, really sucks. Have a good day, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.